Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to be an LPO in the United States Navy. I'm going to give you the ways to think about becoming an LPO or being an LPO and then I'm going to also give you practical applications, things that you can use during your daily or weekly uh, taskings. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Actually, before we get started, you need to be taking notes, especially if you are new to being a first class or new to being an LPO, new to being in charge of people. You need to be taking notes during this training because these things are you're going to run into every single one of these instances as you progress in the United States Navy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So how to be an LPO in the United States Navy. The first things that I'm going to tell you are ways to kind of think. These are going to be some of like the uh, the typical advice that you're going to get. Some of the more fluffy uh, worded things that you're going to get. Oh, just be the best you can be. Oh, take care of your sailors. You're going to hear a lot of that, you know. Uh, so I'm going to give you some of that, but also uh, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of an example uh, for each of the things that I'm talking about, uh, just so I can uh, hammer it home a little bit better. But let's go ahead and get started. And I wrote all of these things just before this video. Just these are just things that I like. I didn't plan this training with like a bunch of different workflows and agendas. I just wrote down a bunch of things that I thought, hey, if you are an LPO, this is what you probably need to know. So that's where all these things are coming from. These are just the ideas that I jotted down. And now I'm training you on that. All right. So this is a little bit of leadership development, a lot of training, and also hopefully, you know, people around the Navy can benefit from a training like this. All right. The first thing I wrote down was know the individual sailors. You need to be an expert on your sailors. So every sailor in your division, you should know who they are. You should know what they like to do. You should know just you should know like basic things about them. So like when people check into your division, you need to know, all right, what does this person like to do in their off time? Um, let's just say this person has like a special diet where they, you know, they're vegan. That's a big personality trait for them. Um, you know, because you don't want them to have a going away party and you decide you're going to take the division to Rodizio's. Uh, some Brazilian steakhouse and the sailors are vegan or vegetarian or something like that. So get to know your sailors, get to know who they are, get to know their family situation. Some of your sailors are going to have spouses. Some of your sailors are going to have children. Get to know that part of your sailors because you need to also be an expert. Like I said, you need to be an expert on your sailors. Things are going to happen to your sailors that you need to be able to see forward in order to help them. So for instance, let's say one of your sailors uh, has a fiance and they live in the barracks. Now you have to start thinking about when that sailor decides to not, you know, be a fiance anymore and actually be married. You have to know, all right, the sailor is eventually going to need to check out of the barracks and, we're going to need to get BAH started for them. So knowing who your sailors are, knowing a little bit about their family situation, these things are going to help you help them get paid more at the end because that's uh, one of my models. My motto is my goal is to put, put, excuse me, my goal is to put money into sailors pockets. So in order to put money into sailors pockets, I need to know who they are. All right. The second thing that I wrote down in my ideas, you know, my impromptu ideas for this training is don't kill the morale of your division. Sometimes you'll have to do less to make folks happy and that morale and uh, the typo in there. And so that morale remains high. What I mean by that is sometimes it's not going to be your role to, 
you know, fight every single battle to uh, everything that you absolutely believe in. Sometimes it's going to be necessary to take a step back. Uh, let's say you really want people to get a training done and you want it to be a liberty item. And you know, if you, you know, try to make something a liberty item at the end of the day, uh, kind of impromptu, you know, people are not going to be really happy about that. You're going to have to take the L. You're going to have to take the L on that because um, you want you want morale to remain high, but you don't want it to and you don't want it to falter because of you. All right. You want to you want to be taking care of them to the point where, you know, you know, they know that they can count on you, but they also know that you're not going to be behind the scenes making life worse for them. So some of the things that you might believe in. You might have to scale it back just a little bit. And that example that I gave, you know, you want a train done. Everyone has to do this train before the end of the day. Liberty item. Well, maybe your senior leadership, maybe they're not as concerned about it. So that is that is good enough reason for you to say, all right, let me take a step back. All right. It's important, but it's not as important to senior leadership. So, you know, ego aside, keep the morale happy. Every situation isn't going to be like that. Sometimes things just need to get done. The CEO says something needs to get done. It needs to get done. Sometimes things need to get done. And it is what it is. But you don't want to be the reason. Don't be the reason that your morale lowers in your division. And then if morale does lower, you know, you have to try to figure out a way to make it come back up. You know, your morale days. Um, You have to make being in your division fun. You have to be creative with that. I can't tell you how to do that specifically because uh, commands are going to operate slightly differently. A work center is going to operate slightly differently. You may be an LPO you know, of a division and you're a recruiter or you're a corpsman or you're on a boat somewhere or you're out on shore, excuse me, you're out on shore duty in Idaho or Nebraska. So your day-to-day workflow might be a little different than say where I work, where I know how we can make things a little bit more fun. Uh, So I hope that makes sense. You're just going to have to be a little creative and hopefully some of the ideas that I give you and the rest of these ideas, they will help you keep morale high within your division. All right. Number three. Create a designated person in your life who you can confide in outside of your division or your department. Every day isn't going to be amazing. And the last thing you want to do is complain to your sailors and start gossiping. You should always, you should almost always reflect the good morale of the division. So another uh, comment about morale. Don't use your sailors. Don't use sailors, other sailors in your department as a soundboard for your issues. Yes, if you have a mentor, that's one thing. But uh, when you go home, maybe your spouse or your significant other is more of a soundboard because every day isn't going to be perfect. Every day isn't going to be a great day. Some days are going to be great days and that person also acts as your soundboard then. But what you don't want to do, you don't want bad days to turn into even worse days or even worse morale for your people because you decide, you know, you're generally going to have the hardest job in your division as a division LPO. You decide to put that weight on someone else in your division or in your department, and that's going to create friction. You don't want to do that. Put that weight on someone else. All right. Not anyone in your division. Um, So hopefully you don't end up in situations like that where you need to, but it's inevitable. You're going to have a bad day. Uh, let your spouse take care of that. Don't let your E5 sailor who was your friend when you were also an E5. Don't let them take care of that. Don't let your E4s. Don't complain to them. You now have to have a soundboard outside, um, a a feedback loop outside of your division or your department. This is going to, this is going to make you appear that, uh, You need to make it look like things really don't bother you a ton because remember LPO 
That L stands for leader or leading, but that L is for leader. People need to look at you as the quintessential leader, that deck plate leader. And if you're, if you look like, you know, things are just too rough for you, you can't handle it, then how can they follow you? You see what I'm saying? When you, when you think about the best leader in your head, They don't look like that. They don't look like, oh, they're having trouble. No, the when you picture a leader in your head right now, you probably picture someone that's pretty confident, right? Someone that chest out, you know, leading from the front. You see what I'm saying? You can't have that type of relationship with the sailors where they think, where they don't believe that uh, you have what it takes. Number four, remember to be a leader worth looking up to. So fitness, qualification, subject matter expertise, Navy admin, achievements. You should be a role model to your sailors. So fitness wise, you need to be, excuse me. Fitness wise, you need to be good. You need to be good to go fitness wise. I would say you need to strive to be excellent or higher fitness wise. But if you come close, you come close. Uh, if you don't quite hit that mark, you know, try next time. But uh, you, I don't recommend, you know, being on FEP uh, as an LPO because it takes you out of the work center. And it makes it more difficult for you to uh, hold others accountable for fitness when you yourself uh, did not hold yourself accountable to that to those same standards, um, qualifications, you want to, if you're an LPO, you want to already be qualified. You want to already have taken up those qualifications, uh, generally. And if you have to, while you're an LPO, then I recommend getting those qualifications out of the way very quickly so that can, so that you can get back to what you're supposed to be doing, which is taking care of the administrative taskings for your division officer. Now I say subject matter expertise. You still need to be a technical expert in your field. Um, I assume you will still be a technical expert, uh, but if you are not, you need to make sure that you remain as such because the Navy administrative taskings, they can take you out of work, but it's your job to make sure that you stay technical Um, because at some point, Yes, you're LPO, but you will be a chief maybe one day. You still are expected to be a technical expert as a chief as well. So practice those habits now as an LPO. And then, uh, you know, they'll carry over when you become a chief or an officer. If you move over, you know, you you just have to stay technical. You have to uh, be a subject matter expert. All right. Navy admin. Uh, you still need to be the resident expert for your junior sailors when it comes to administration, uh, Navy administration. And what I mean by that is you're the first person that they need to go to when they have a question about, oh, I'm trying to move out of the barracks. What do I do? Oh, I'm about to get married. What do I need to route? Oh, um, I'm not being paid correctly. How do I get paid correctly? All right. You are their first line defense. All right. And then because you're the first line defense, you need to know how the command operates when these things become issues, when sales are not getting paid correctly. So you need to be abreast to uh, how the command expects to you to route these things. All right. So Navy achievement. You still need to be a lot of times when uh, you're in charge of people, people will continue to tell you it's not about you. That's a lie. All right. While you are developing leaders in your junior sailors, your career still matters. You still matter. The things you accomplish still matter. The money you bring home still matter to you and your family. All right. So it's I don't believe in the whole it's not about you. Yes, there is a selflessness within being a leader that you have to um, that you have to have. But 
by no means does that mean, you know, you don't put yourself in for awards or you don't, uh, you don't try to be the best that you can possibly be. And so I think it's wrong for people to say that, that it's not about you uh, as a leader, because the better you are or the better I am, if I'm using myself as an example, the better I am, the better role model that sales are going to have to look up to. And then I can transition some of my knowledge to them because I know what it takes to achieve a certain level of success in the Navy. Imagine being a new LPO and people start telling you it's not about you and you haven't even had a chance to win a sale of the quarter. You haven't even had a chance to put yourself in for a mission award or anything like that or be nominated for a mission award. So, uh, yeah. Recognize that your achievements within the Navy, they still matter. And they're going to matter when it comes to making rank and achieving more in your career. And you need those achievements so that sailors beneath you, they know what it looks like in order to make those achievements. So you should be a role model for your sailors. Next, be trustworthy. That's self-explanatory. I tried not to have too many of these be trustworthy uh do as you say you're going to do. I try not to have too many of those because those things are just obvious. But yeah, I had to add at least one of them. All right, so be trustworthy. Uh, I'm not even going to even get into an example. You know what that means. All right. Read the division. Here's a good one. Read the division. If you are in a division full of first classes, they will need less leadership than if you have a bunch of junior sailors. That will present problems if everyone that will present problems, if everyone you're in charge of is more senior, you will have no choice but to become a better leader. People will recognize who's really leading. All right. So if you are an LPO and you're in charge of uh, first classes that are more senior than you, you're going to have a little bit of an uphill battle. And by that, I mean, people are going to think that they know more than you which they could just as easily know more than you. They probably do, but there's something called positional authority. And so recognize that you have that positional authority. So if you need to use it, you can, but don't look at your first classes like that are senior to you and think, oh, you're better than them for some reason. Nope. Now you should start thinking of it as a team. I mean, you should already think of it as a team effort to get things accomplished. But they have careers too. They have leadership that they need to do too. So now what you should do, you should focus on practicing delegating, tasking to those senior first classes. So a lot of the things that you have to do in your day-to-day admin, you now delegate that to the senior first classes. Uh, Sailors need to be trained. All right, senior first classes, you conduct these training. Uh, you're also you're going to have sailors that you know don't maybe they don't gravitate toward your leadership style, and that's fine. This goes back to when I said on the previous slide. Uh, nope, not on the previous slide. This goes back to where I said read the division. All right, just because you're an LPO does not mean that. Now, like you're King Tut or something, um, it's a it's still a lower middle management position. All right. You're you're a supervisor, but it's a lower middle management position. So don't think of yourself too highly. Think of yourself uh, at the requisite amount uh, that you should. But you, you can't have too much ego in that position, especially when you're charged with leading people who are more senior to you. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, what you say goes and, you know, as soon as you say it, everyone's just going to listen. That may not happen. So what you have to do is you got to take a little bit of a step back. You got to read the room, right? They may not require as much leadership 
as these other junior sailors might require. So, tasking that they're given, maybe you have to present it in a different way. All right. Your E4s, maybe you tell them exactly what to do. These E6s, these more senior adults, you have to tell them, uh, you have to find a different way to tell them what to do. All right. So, if uh, you have an E6 and you need, and they're a collateral duty holder for you, and you need them to do that collateral duty, there's a task for the collateral duty. Uh, don't phrase it to them like, hey, do this, do this because I say do it. No, just let them know, hey, uh, hey, can you take care of that uh, tasker? And they should say, yeah, yeah, I got it. All right. But don't don't phrase it to them like, hey, do this. It's like, but we're both for, we're both first classes. All right. So just make sure you tailor your message. All right. I'm beating that with a dead horse because I don't want you in a situation where people dislike you, even though you have positional authority, but you're using it wrong because you're, you're, uh, you're thinking that a lower level middle management position is more than what it is. All right. You're in charge of the administrative taskings for the division. All right. You're, you're there to be a buffer between the chief divo and the rest of the junior sailors. Don't, don't set yourself up for failure with the rest of the first classes. That's what I will say. All right. Ask for help from a mentor, chief, senior, first class petty officer. Yeah, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not know every single thing. Uh, some people uh, end up in LPO positions and they are brand new. They they have less than five years in the military. You know, these, this is like a brand new sailor. So it's okay, not a brand new sailor. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a brand new first class that gets thrusted into LPO position and they really don't know. So make sure that you ask for help from the people that can help you. Don't ask for help from your E5s. Your E5 that tells you, hey, I need to, um, I need to route this package uh, for Navy Cool. All right, don't ask him, hey, how do I do this? No, you go to someone uh, either more senior to you or another first class petty officer whose, whose job it is is almost to help you because if you have more senior first classes, they... They now have to change their paradigm to, I need to help this LPO be successful. That's how they need to start thinking. Um, I need to make this LPO's job easier because also you're not always going to be there. So you're going to need an assistant LPO at some point. Someone is going to need to fill in for you and you want one of those senior first classes to do that. You want them to already be comfortable doing that. And if they're already helping you, if they've already taken the initiative to start training your people on what they need to know, then it's already done. Like you, you're already set up for success. So take advantage of the chiefs, your chief specifically. And I'll, I will mention that toward the end and the other uh, senior first class petty officers that are willing to help. Some people are not going to be willing to help. Don't bother. Don't even, don't even try. All right. When, when people show you that they're not willing to help you, that's it. You no longer ask them for help. All right. Still be cordial, still, you know, maintain good relations. But if also, if someone, you know, isn't willing to help and they don't know what they're talking about, you no longer ask them for help. All right. All right. Let people show you that. Next, you will become the bad guy sometimes. Time to develop some thick skin. All right. I said, you, yes, you will become the bad guy sometimes, but you will not have a great day all the time. It's impossible. So, in the situations where you have to become the bad guy, 
you, I'm not saying, all right, this is your villain story arc, where now you turn into the villain, you turn into the bad guy. What I'm saying is, you have to be comfortable and rely on your ability to lead, rely on the, either the, um, the, ah, I'm missing the word. Reputation. Rely on a reputation that you have just built. You built over either the months or the weeks that you've been LPO because bad times, they're going to pass. They will eventually pass. You'll be fine, generally. But you want to you want to make sure that you don't let those bad times being the bad guy get to you too much because when you have to become the bad guy, it's going to suck. Just telling you, but you're going to be better for it because eventually you will be chief and you will have to be a bad guy and maybe it'll be better for you. But for now, uh, yeah, start getting used to having thick skin because you're going to need it. You're going to need it for some of the battles that you will eventually have to have. You're going to have to fight, you know, battles for your sailors. You're going to have to fight battles with other first classes. You're going to have to fight battles with chiefs and above and officers. You're going to have to fight a lot of battles. Make sure you start developing that thick skin. And when when you have to be the bad guy, I need you to remember that. I need you to remember, all right, I got to. I got to be a little tougher. I can't crumble just because I was the bad guy for a minute. And now, you know, my mental health is all out of whack. Nope. I need you to start now. I need you to prepare yourself to harden and understand that even if you have like a really great division now, maybe next duty station, you don't have such a great division. You jump into a situation where things are a little chaotic now you have to be a bad guy a little bit more because now you have to hold people accountable and you have to set standards and you have to enforce those standards. Thick skin. All right. Prepare for that. Next. Stand up for the things that you believe in, but don't put your leadership team down during the process. Example. If you believe that getting online GMTs done within the first week of the fiscal year, then that's what you believe in. Oh, said that wrong. I got so many typos. I told you, I wrote this in a whim. All right, I'll read it again. Example, if you believe getting online GMT is done within the first week of the fiscal year, then that's what you believe in. All right? That's what you stand for. If your leaders don't agree, you have the freedom to convince them otherwise. And how would you convince them otherwise? Well, you know, chief, divo, if we get this done now, we won't have to worry about this later on in the fiscal year. And we won't have to worry about this. Maybe a sailor needs to do one of these GMTs, these online GMTs, before they submit a, a special request shit. And it's already done. All right. So that's why you want to get it knocked out. Make that case. Likewise. If that doesn't work, then at least they know you're not a robot with no views and that you stand for something. And then if your leaders don't agree, don't gossip about your leaders. Don't don't gossip. That goes back to the first things that I was saying. Uh, you don't want to turn your division into a gossip rag with you because you know everything about all the sailors. You don't want to turn your division into the, you don't want to be that person. That, you know, because then people start losing trust in you. We don't want that to happen because then people can't come to you and things be confidential. So make sure that you are keeping things to yourself, especially disagreements with leadership. A lot of the times those those are going to have to be kept to yourself. You can't uh, go run to the junior sailors and tell them all these disagreements or um, things of that nature. Next, treat people the way they want to be treated. 
the golden rule is treat people the way you want to be treated. Why did I say treat people? Treat people the way they want to be treated. Because I would want someone to treat me how I want to be treated. Because I don't know how you want to be treated. You could want to be treated like trash. And then you would treat me like that. No, don't do that. I don't want you, I don't want you to treat me how you would treat yourself or how you want to be treated. I want you to treat me how I want to be treated. I want to be listened to. I want to be recognized. I want to be all these things. So I know how I want to be treated. If you, however you want to be treated, that's how you need to treat people. Or not how you want to be treated. How they want to be treated, that's how you have to treat people. And I just, I just told you the reason. Because everyone's level of treatment is going to be different. And in the military, you're going to run into some you're going to run into some personality issues. You know, we have this whole melting pot thing in the military. You're going to run into some personality issues. And this is why during that first part. Where did I say? Oh, read the division. Yeah. This is why I said read the division. You got to read people. All right. You got to. You, you now have to take it upon yourself Understand who you're dealing with. That's what I mean by read the division. All right. So when it comes to treating people the way they want to be treated, everyone may not want to be to be put up for sale of the quarter. Now, some people may want to be put up for sale of the quarter. Um, and sometimes you'll have to uh, to get people to be greater than what they think that they can be, but you're going to run into some personalities. Some people are just not going to be the seller of the quarter material. It, they can only be one. All right. And in, in a command or within a department, there's, there's only going to be one or two representatives, all right? And uh, if your department is, 20 people or 50 people or 100 people you only have one or two representatives. So everyone's not going to be the greatest sailor of all time. You have to realize some people, they do not treat the military how you may treat the military now that you are in charge of people, now that people's accomplishments affect you. You have to understand that, yes, you can try to get people to want to be great, but they don't necessarily have to. They're still going to collect a paycheck. So this is why I say read the room. Because uh, they may want to be treated almost like a like they matter, but not to the point where you're expecting a whole lot from them. You're expecting greatness from them. People may shy away from that. They just don't want that. And you have to recognize that. So that's one of the reasons why I say treat people the way that they want to be treated. Now, if someone doesn't really like to talk and you try to get them to talk, they may not like that and they may not like you for it. That's what I mean. Even sometimes the quiet person in the corner is a quiet person in the corner for a reason. They really don't want to talk. And also, Sometimes if people don't want to talk, they may not want to talk to you. Read the room. You have to recognize that. As soon as you recognize that, all right, I you did your part. They're not receptive to you. That's okay. You still take care of their administrative stuff and you know you still make sure that they're good to go as a sailor, but everyone does not have to be receptive to you. It helps if they are, but if they're not, they're not. So I hope I make that somewhat clear. It may become a little bit more clear as I get further into this list of the things I just thought of to how to be a good LPO. But uh, yeah, that receptiveness, you're going to learn a lot about that in the military because personalities, you're going to run into a lot of different personalities and some or 
a lot you may not get along with. It's just the way it is. Moving on. Praise in public, correct in private. So, you want to make sure that you're recognizing your folks. All right, tell them when they're doing a good job. You know, tell them, even if they're doing a good job and you may notice some, a way that they can improve, you can go ahead and say that. Um, hey, I think you're doing a really good job. Um, I like how I like how you made that spreadsheet. Uh, next time, though, let's see. Let's see if we can add um, all the other first classes to that email next time. Like, let's just make sure everyone else is in the know. Maybe just something like that. Like, that's okay. But correction, like reprimand, yeah, you got to do that in private. Uh, You don't want people to feel like uh, they, you you don't want to make people feel bad for messing up because it's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay for you to go ahead and call them out in front of everyone and embarrass them. For making mistakes. Mistakes are gonna happen. Don't do that. Pull them to the side, let them know. Hey, I noticed that you know we or uh I either didn't do a good enough job in training you or you missed something here. Uh is there anything that I can do to help? Um hopefully it's more of a conversation like that and less of a hey, you did this and I don't like it. We don't want that, we still have to remain professional. So, praise in public, correct in private. Brilliant on the basics. All right, what is brilliant on the basics? So, there's an acronym. It's called SAILOR. S stands for sponsorship. The A stands for assign a mentor. The I stands for indoctrination. The L stands for leadership or CDBs. Career development boards. The O stands for ombudsman. And the R stands for recognition. Now, sponsorship, that's like the first introduction for new sailors into your organization. So you got to make sure your sponsorship is on point. Uh, Assign a mentor. Make sure when new sailors are arriving that they have someone uh, that... Maybe they have a little bit more in common with. Maybe they're the same rate. Someone that can mentor them, get them started on the right foot. Uh, the I, indoctrination. Make sure that they're going through indoc. If you're uh, one of the participants in your commands, indoc. Um, yeah, just make sure you're doing your job to the best of your ability. Uh, the L is leadership. So career development boards. You have to make sure that new people understand uh, like the ladder, that's really important. The ECP, the enlisted career path, these are all very important things for new people to know, and it gets them started on the right foot. Uh, o, ombudsman. So the relationship between uh, your sailor's family and the command, an ombudsman is supposed to be that that touch point. Now. You can improve that relationship by understanding a sailor's family situation off rip. And then that will allow you to supply resources to the sailor's family as well. It's not just going to be the ombudsman's job to figure out, oh, uh, can a spouse apply for this certification or get this job on base? You might know some of that information. You might be driving around base and see, oh, this is a job fair. All right, new spouse or a new sailor checks into the command. Spouse doesn't have uh, employment. Well, let's get, you know, uh, let's get that resource to that sailor. Let's let, the, let's let that sailor know we have job openings on base. Go to this career fair for the spouse, right? So yeah, 
brilliant on the basics. Get familiar with that. Use that. And that should also guide uh, just how you conduct business for those new sailors. You know, sponsorship, extremely important. This should this should be like if sailors in your division are sponsoring people, make sure that they know what they're doing. Get people off to the right start. All right. Next, I say the best leaders are still excellent followers. Make sure your leadership team can count on you to carry out their orders. The best leaders are the best followers. That is facts. Anyone, anyone who's ever been a good leader, the only way that they got to that leadership position is they had to be one of those followers. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example of like, if we, if you see like a movie, I got an idea or I got a, I got an example. Uh, you ever, you ever seen like a crime movie where, you know, maybe the kingpin or the guy that's in charge of the, the gang, uh, they go to jail and then the, the underboss, they didn't step in and take over. How did that underboss now become in charge? It's because they were an excellent follower of that leader. Now, I know that's an example of a organization that's up to no good, but that still remains the same. If you think about like head coaching in sports, an assistant coach will take over for the head coach if the head coach is out and in the interim, let's say the head coach gets fired. The, the reason why that assistant coach takes over is because that assistant, co- that assistant coach played their role. They understood that they had to follow for a time being. It's Your time will come. I assure you, your time will come. But for now, you need to be a good follower as well as a leader. So you're practicing both. But everyone has to practice both. Your CO has to be a good follower because your CO is responsible to their boss you know, their rear admiral, their vice admiral, um, their captain, your so it that's just how it goes. You're responsible to your chief, your devo, your department leadership, as well as you're responsible to those sailors. So that's how you have to think about um being a good leader. It means you're also a good follower, which means when your chief or your divo, when they ask you to carry something out, you need to be good at that because that's also what they're going to remember. They're going to remember how the act was done. Um, they're going to remember that the act that the act was done and also how it was done, how quickly you were able to do it. That's going to be major. If you are able to carry things out quickly with haste, people are going to remember that. People are going to remember you're the guy that we can count on. Now, this could be a good thing and a bad thing. It's mostly a good thing, but a bad thing when you're the only one that uh, that can do, that can, that can be counted upon. So, next. You're responsible for all your division's collateral duties. Hold everyone accountable for their collateral. This is, this is preparation for uh, if you decide, you know, you want, you want to take LPO to the next level and you want to become, you know, a chief one day or um, a department LPO, you, you will eventually be in charge of all department collaterals and all um, creating those collateral duty holders. So like even assigning collateral duty holders, you'll be in, you will one day be in charge of that. So now you need to get used to understanding how those collateral duties work and then holding your sales accountable for being able to carry out their roles. That's how that goes. All right. So practice at that lower level, practice at that LPO level with, you know, your muster PO, your training PO, your division career counselors, make sure that they're doing what they need to do. And the reason why you have to hold them accountable is because Sometimes you're going to have junior people in these positions and they just don't know. And you holding them to account, you holding them accountable isn't you being 
a micromanager, you are letting them know how things have to be done, how things have to be ran. And unfortunately, sometimes it's going to look like micromanaging at first, but, uh, and this is part of being a bad guy. Sometimes you have to be the bad guy. You have to be the one to tell people to, that they have to do work. That's just how you have to. And now you know why you have to develop thick skin. Because remember back when you were in E3 or E4, did you always do your collateral duty the best of your ability? You probably didn't. Sometimes you need someone to hold you accountable. Sometimes you need someone to tell you exactly what to do. Uh, you might even need someone over your shoulder, not saying that that is a bad thing, but you needed that person over your shoulder showing you how to do something, you know, side saddling you, helping you. So next. Familiarize yourself with the SORN slash SORM, the standard organizations regulation of the United United States Navy. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as the ship's organization's regulations manual. Familiarize yourself with this because uh, if you control F, you can Google the swarm. If you control F in there and you control F for LPO, you're going to see LCPO and LPO are slashed together. So everything that the LCPO has to do it says LCPO slash LPO. What does that mean? That means you are expected to carry out the exact same tasking as the LCPO to an extent. So that's what you need to know. That's what you need to know about the SORN. The SORN is going to tell you what you are responsible for. The SORN is actually uh, when whenever I was first LPO, that's how that's what I use to describe my job role because the SORN is the only place that I've seen it say uh, the LPO's job is to conduct administrative uh, tasking on behalf of the division officer. I think that's that's how it says. I can probably find it right now and show it to you, but um, maybe I'll save it to the end. But yeah, familiarize yourself with the SORN. And also, the standard... Uh, standard organizations regulations manual or let's say your command has one you're going to need to reference this uh, when things come up in relation to your command maybe in relation to your watch that's just how that's how that works so be familiar with that and this is especially important for officers um You'll you'll hear talk of the SORM from an officer before you'll hear it from an enlisted. I don't know why that is. I don't know why enlisted are care a little less about the SORM than uh, officers. But remember who you work for. You know you work to make sure that your divo, your division officer, is good to go. So let's move on. All right, now I move on to practical advice. The first piece of practical advice that I'll tell you is create basic Excel trackers or basic Excel tracker templates for several situations. And this includes musters, random taskers, collateral duties, random taskers, and then last but not least, random taskers. You're going to have random things pop up where you need accountability for all your sailors. All right. You need to have templates set up so that you can easily either delegate someone to do, to round up uh, all this information, uh, or you know you do it yourself. But have those templates set. Have those templates set so that when the CO asks all the divisions to report up their numbers for, did everyone do this training? All right, you got the template set, and now. You have someone in your division go to each individual sale and say, hey, did you do it? And you check. Yes, 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 yes. And then you send your numbers up. And that's that's how that that's how you do that. So. Have. Have those uh, taskers or excuse me, have those templates 
for when those tasks come because they're going to come. You're going to run into these all the time. More practical advice. Make sure you are qualified in your job role, warfare, pen, watch duty. You need to either, if you're not um, qualified, you need to be working on it, or you should already be qualified before you take over as LPO uh, because these things are kind of going to get in your way and they're going to be a burden to deal with as you become more seasoned as an LPO. Sometimes uh, being an LPO, it can be a busy job, but it's not always busy. Sometimes you have a day where you may have uh, maybe an hour or so to spare when th- nothing's really going on. And I'm not saying that to say, hey, you need to fill it with a bunch of stuff. I'm saying that because is it better to be hit with a random tasker when you have nothing going on or hit with a random tasker when you're knee deep in your mission? It's probably better to be hit with a random tasker when you have nothing going on. So sometimes your off time or your your downtime, that time that you're not doing a lot that you almost need to be at the ready. Like something's going to happen. And when it does, you need to be available for it. And yes, you can still be studying for your warfare pen and your job qual and getting your JQR sign. Yes, you can still obviously be doing that, but you want those things out of the way because when things hit the fan and when things need to get done in 30 minutes or less, you need to be right there ready to go. We don't need you having some qualification that you need to get done or let's say, you know, you need ample time to complete something. We don't want, we don't want your lack of qualifications to be an excuse. So next piece of practical advice. These are things that you can put into practice. These are applicable. These are things that you can actually do. Refer back to the Bupers instruction 1610.10. This is the eval instruction. You need to refer to this anytime you're conducting eval business. Because as I'm about to uh, let you know, you need to be an expert. You need to be an expert on evals. You need to be expert on eval writing. You need to be an expert at brag sheet creation. Um, creating evals, the normal administrative information that goes into it. You need to be an expert on it. So you need to have that Bupers instruction on your desktop. Uh, it's pretty long, so I don't know if you should have it printed out, but you know, if you want to print it out at home, not use government paper, uh, then do that. But that Bupers instruction is vital because a lot of people will not know everything about evals. So asking the question to others may not actually uh, bear fruitful knowledge or uh, an answer that you can actually use. But if you ask the Bupers instruction, the eval manual, that manual will have the answer. I assure you it will. Moving on. I already mentioned this when I talked about the storm, but as far as practical advice, so your command specific storm, uh, standard uh, organization uh, regulations manual. It can help you realize what you're in, what you're supposed to be in charge of. So that's why I mentioned everything the LCPO is supposed to know. The LPO is technically supposed to know, and you have to, you have nowhere else better to look than the SORM. So that's S O R M or S O R N. So also. Practical advice, you may have to work longer than your subordinates out of necessity. Some things, 
Sometimes things just need to get done. And the only way you can get it done is if you stay late. Sometimes evals need to get signed or excuse me, not signed, but evals need to be finished. They need to, there's like a due date and you just have to complete these tasks. Um, I'm not saying every day is going to be like that, but yeah, sometimes you got to stay late. It's, it's what it is. All right. Be at every CDB. All your sailors, CDBs, be at them. For one, you know, you want to be there to support your sailors in case they have trouble speaking up or if they forget something that maybe they want to ask um, because some commands or some places they will have like the uh, they will have a career counselor at the CDB. That's like a command career counselor, possibly. But uh, yeah, so for a CDB, you want to be there for your sailors just in case a sailor doesn't know what they could ask. Remember, you were a junior sailor at one point. You did not know everything. Uh, you obviously know more now, but back then, you may not have known what the right questions to ask. You may have not have known what the right benefits to inquire about, what the correct trajectory, career, traje- career trajectory uh, to inquire about, or asking about reenlistment bonuses you just don't know so you want to be there for your sailors because you need to be a mouthpiece for them and also uh i said be at every cdb you also need to be at midterm counseling and eval counselings or uh, you want to be there as well uh if they let you some places might be different they may be just a chief does an eval counseling fine because also uh you know, you're probably not going to be at an eval counseling for another first class in your division. Because those evals typically don't go through you. They just, they start at your chief. So you don't really have a hand in that. All right. You should know the updates to collateral duties on a weekly to bi-weekly basis. This is extremely useful. Because remember that first, I think the first line I said was that you need to be an expert on your sailors. Well, I'm going to double down on being an expert. You need to be an expert on the collateral duties within your division. You need to know everything that's going on within your division. There shouldn't be anything that's a surprise when one of your collateral duty holders isn't doing their job properly. It shouldn't be like a surprise for you. It shouldn't. Well, first, when your people are making mistakes like that, they shouldn't really make it up to the chief. You need to be that filter for them. So let's make sure uh, you get, you're get you getting weekly or bi-weekly updates on all of your division's collateral duties. And this is also going to help you in the future when you become a char- in charge of way more. And uh, you you will have to have more forethought. Uh, excuse me, not forethought. You will have to have more knowledge of a bunch of different collateral duties as you climb the ranks. So this is going to help you for the future, but also helps make sure that your sailors are doing what they're supposed to do and they're not learning bad habits. They're in you're not getting your chiefs in trouble for, you know, sailors missing, let's say a CDB or, um, you know, you don't want people missing out on money from a reenlistment. They decided to reenlist and now, uh, you guys or your division career counselor didn't do their due diligence, but you should also have a handle on that. So you need to be an expert on your division's collateral duties. All right, two more. I wrote down no tough guy attitudes, especially if you were peers with your subordinates. All right, remember what I said, lower level middle management position. All right, you're not the king of Zion. Do not walk into the LPO situation and think 
all right, now I have to be a completely new person to an extent, to a small extent, that might be true. But for the majority of situations, no, especially if you were peers with the people that you are now in charge of, they're not going to, they're not going to take that well. If you just certainly change your entire personality, all right, this is what I mean by read the room. It almost seems like read the room is like the most important thing uh, because certain commands, certain departments, they're going to require a different level of leadership. And you need to be tailored. You need to be malleable and flexible in order to be able to tailor your leadership to what's necessary. It may not be necessary to be go, go, go. You might just have a really good division. So that they all just conduct business. They just they just conduct business well, your whole division. So it may not be necessary for you to be that way. So you don't have to be that way. Uh, your eval isn't going to say, uh, yelled at a bunch of sailors for 15 minutes on proper etiquette. It, it's not going to say that. So you don't have to do that. See what I'm saying? So remember your job is largely administrative. Ask some ask, ask someone more senior within the command to explain some of the new admin tasks you need to know as far as how the command conducts business. So kind of like turnover, but on an as needed basis. Make sure you're not letting your people down uh, by missing something administratively. Make sure you have someone that's explaining to you because you're not going to know everything. Explain, hey, how do we do this? I see this on our routing matrix, uh, but I'm not sure how to go about doing it. Do not let your sales down because of something that you don't know that you could have easily asked someone more senior than you. So you probably should start working on building relationships. And then once you build enough relationships and you start to realize um, that most of your questions are going to be answerable through doctrine, through, uh, through your commands, guidances, then you'll start leaning less on people. Or you'll just know it. You'll start leaning less on mentors and you'll just know the information. Okay, so I think I already said this, but you need to be an expert at eval writing, brag sheet creation, SOQ, award writing. And I also have videos on this channel about that. Uh, I have a video on... Uh, how to be successful in the Navy. I got a bunch of like Navy uh, videos. I got a video on how to conduct a QRB. I have a video on eval writing. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of videos on this channel. <laughs> this is a quote. Make these leaders do their job. You can use that, but you got to quote me when you use that quote, because what I mean by that is your chief's job. Part of their job is to make sure that you are equipped to replace them one day. I can't think of. I can't think of a way that that wouldn't be true. Your chief, these people, they have to retire. They have to retire at some point. They have to move on in life at some point, but the problem is they know things. They know things that they now have to impart on to someone else. Who better to impart that on than to someone fulfilling a role such as LPO of a division? Your L your LCPO needs to train you in order to be them one day. You're not always going to be, you're not always going to get a chief or an LCPO that's, you know, going to go out of their way in order to train you. 
That's why I say make these leaders do their job. That's their job. They have to make sure that you are trained and you are equipped, that you are capable of leading other sailors at their level. Because if they make sure that that makes them look better, you know, they make sure that you can perform the task of a chief, then your sailors are inevitably going to be better, which still makes them better because they benefit from all the accomplishments from those sailors and you being better makes those sailors accomplish more. So it's imperative that you make these leaders do their job. Yeah, you have to make them. Sometimes you have to make people mentor you. All right, more practical advice. Stay up to date on the latest nav admins and all navs. So nav admin updates are updates that go out to the Navy, it's Navy administrative updates. All NAS are Navy and Marine Corps uh, updates. So be up to date on the latest NAV admins. And then here's something more practical. Make your divisions conduct trainings on the latest NAV admins that directly affect them. So, or even ones that don't directly affect them, let's say a new rate gets created and it's a nav admin robotics a, a new robotics rate do train on that so people know that there was a new rate that just came out so introduce the topics from the sailor to sailor newsletter in your quarters updates the sailor to sailor newsletter everyone should be getting those emails that's a really easy way to stand out you want to if you want to be up to date on what's going on in the news in the navy sailor to sailor newsletter is where you should be looking it comes out every month i believe it's every month yeah and in there the uh they encourage you to post the sailor to sailor newsletter on your wall or bulletin board so uh, just make sure that you're up to date on everything going on in that newsletter and that your sailors are so that you can either present it to them at a quarters or maybe you find something in the sailor to sailor newsletter that one of your other sailors can train. And now you're developing leaders because now you put someone else at the forefront to stand up in front of a group and train. I think that this is a good this is a good way to get people out of their comfort zone and practice public speaking to a group that they are familiar with. So it should be easier when they have to, you know, publicly speak or brief in front of a group that they're not so familiar with because practice makes perfect. Sorry, I had to, <laughs> I had to go with the canned practice makes perfect there, but I think it works. More practical advice. Prepare your sailors at the beginning of the quarter for SOQ. Guide to hit wickets. So the SOQ, SOY guidance, it's pretty standard across the Navy. Commands may do something slightly different, but it's generally going to be the same. Especially if you're a first class, uh, you know, it, you can't go wrong with following the Navy's SOQ, SOY guidance, and also uh, the the convening, not the convening order. Yeah, the convening order. Um, it's either the, the convening order or the precepts. Wh whichever one it is, I believe it's the convening order. You can't go wrong with following that as far as you know, being successful and being competitive for those types of awards, SOQ, SOY. Follow your command's guidance because, and the reason why I say hit the wickets is because you're going to literally be judged. Someone, another person in your command or another first class in your command, if it's junior sailor of the quarter or blue jacket of the quarter, they're literally going to bring a spreadsheet and look at a package and see, I see leadership there. Cool. 
I see mission performance there. Cool. I see award there. Cool. And they're checking, they're literally checking off a list. So what does that tell you? Hit the wickets. Let your sailors understand that they have to hit the wickets in order to be extremely competitive. Now, do you have to hit every single wicket to win? You don't. I've had times where I didn't hit every wicket and I've won. But for the most part, that's the reason why I don't hit a wicket or that I didn't hit a wicket is because of poor planning. If you plan early, you will hit all the wickets. So. Next. How you do anything is how you do everything. You're a great LPO. You will be a great chief one day. So good luck. Hope you enjoyed this training. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this video with someone. Or don't share it. Because now you know all of this knowledge. And you'll be even more successful. And no one else will know it. So uh, good luck out there. But if you need to reach out to me. uh, Instagram handle is on the screen. But yeah, I'll see you soon. Oh, and this channel is mostly geared toward military from a financial perspective. So if you need any help getting credit cards, increasing your credit score, getting the best credit cards, traveling around the world for free, using credit cards to do it. Um, not going into debt, but using credit card reward points to uh, travel the world and get experiences that you would not otherwise get. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Take a look at some of the other videos that we have on the channel. But my goal is to put money into sailors' pockets, and that is one way that I do it. Another way that I do it is I try to write really good evals for the sailors. All right, we're trying to. I try to train sailors to do that. So my teachings, when they go into sailors that are also teaching, now I've just created a tree. And that tree cascades. Now the forest. And now the forest writes like I. The forest writes like how I write. And so that's how I try to make an impact. Make an impact. I try to make a cascading impact. I try to do that with this channel. Try to put money in the sales pockets. Through credit cards. uh, Through uh, advancing. Getting sellers advanced. Getting sales awarded. Um, that's just what I do, right? If you believe in you know what I'm trying to accomplish here, like button, subscribe to keep up with me because you will lose me in the sea of other YouTubers if you do not subscribe. Uh, notification bell as well. Uh, but I will be coming out with more information like this and more videos like this, uh, just mentorship videos. Probably going to be coming later on in the year as well. Um, But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And of course, everyone's going to have something to say, some piece of advice that they need to offer to sailors. Throw it in the comments. No, there's probably a bunch of things that I missed. Throw it in the comments. All right. I'll see you guys in that next video. Peace.